Well, hello there. Long time no see. Not really. Either way, the NBA draft is, I guess, like almost three, a little under three months away. The scouting reports will be coming out. I've been working on this project for Hoops Hype. 75 prospects, scouting guide, going to be a 50,000 word project being released shortly on USA Today's Hoops Hype. So peep that. I'm converting all the scouting reports into individualized reports. But today, what we're talking about is the players that have risen and fallen through the NCAA tournament. Shout out John Hollinger for this information. Before we continue today's video, hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get right into today's video. Who's going up and who's going down stock-wise? First guy is Mr. Jared McCain. And yes, the guy by the name of Jared McCain is going up in terms of his stock due to the fact that he's actually had a really good shooting performance for being an undersized. I don't know why when I watch him, he kind of reminds me of Malik Monk in that ability to just score playoff ball and continue to just shoot even if he's not doing great yeah i know that against george attack right here i think tollinger mentions it he had that three of ten shooting night and i th one of the things that we saw though as the season ended was he was shooting 41 percent from three he's a guy who showed 10.7 threes per 100 possessions which is I think pretty well but at 6-3 he had 11 rebounds over the weekend with a season rebound rate of 9.4 so i think a lot of people like how he plays with his size and likes his physicality and i think that's a really good observation by john hollinger in terms of guys that i think really showed off down the stretch of the season and in the tournament how much more physical they are than their opponents and i think jared mccain is one of those guys that i'm very excited to see how he progresses with the season or in the pre-draft process kyle filipowski a guy that i say is kind of like nas reed who i think could be like a seven foot version of nas reed and he's exciting as he's able to showcase his multifaceted skill set skill set as a big who's a bit more well versed than i think people have given him credit but the thing is is i think the question still is is he a power forward or center as i don't know if he's big enough to be a center or if he's mobile slash skilled enough to be a four but when he goes against houston in the sweet 16 and the rest of the tournament i think we're seeing more but defensively i think we saw that he can be a guy who can switch out onto the perimeter he can be a weak side defensive rim protector and against vermont against jmu he has shown he can crash the boards he can shoot from all th three levels and I, I think that's what people want I personally, again, see him more kind of like a Nas Reed. I've seen some people say Kelly Olenek, but I really do think he is more of a power forward than he is a center. He can play center in a pinch, but he is more of a power forward. But I just think we're seeing more of that versatility being at full display for being a seven-footer, which I think is huge. Stephen Castle, a guy that I think a lot of people, if you haven't been following the season, you the six-foot-six, I still think the question about, I think he's more of a two or a point wing than a true guard, but Castle has shown that he can run the pick and roll. He can finish with that left hand. And I think even though his shot can be a little shaky at times, I think that he has shown my ability to go out into the floor and take a team in transition or in the half court and be able to make the right reads either as a playmaker for his teammates or as a shot creator for himself is something that people like and i'm not gonna say he's like Jalen williams but that style of ball handling and creation ability reminds me of Jalen williams and his ability to get out and make the right read in the right play to win and 
that's I think going to be able to translate earlier again this is not a guy that needs to shoot like Kyle Korver he just needs to continue to rebound use his size well and be able to minimize his mistakes if he does that he's going to have a long successful career with a lot of rewards to come to fruition and I think that's the biggest thing Donovan another guy who's been doing really well I've said he's a way bigger and mobile version of Jakob Pertl and he Kling Kong is what people said on Sunday when he blocked eight shots and that ability to go out there in two tournament games to grab 22 rebounds in 47 minutes shot 14 of 18 from the field he hasn't made a three this season and is at only 55.6 percent from the line but if you see before games he's allegedly just shooting long on target three-pointers and his ability to move on defense at his size and even get up and down the floor it is huge and UConn is an unusually slow tempo squad for being such a defensively I mean for being such a do dominant team they're at 315th in the Ken Palm suggested tempo but a potentially eight elite eight matchup of a fast-paced Illinois team again would be a great test for Clean. but yeah I think this was one that just solidifies the type of player that he is someone tell me down below if I'm saying this right Nefali Dante Dante, I didn't know much about him until this tournament. Golly, seven footer out of Oregon. He had a 30 PER, a ranked six amongst power six players. Did not know that. Okay. I don't follow college basketball until when it starts to scout, but Dante had 19 steals in the last seven games for the Ducks. And for a seven footer who shot 69.5% from the floor, including 800% 12 of 12 outing against Colorado in a must win Pac 12 game, that's insane. And yeah, he's 23. But I could see a guy, end of the first, second, with the success we've seen, his ability to, you know, make plays out the dribble handoff, high post actions, and he dunks, like Mitch Robinson type dunks. And his shot blocking ability isn't insane, but I think if you just throw, uh, he could be a guy who dominates and ended up going late first, but I really think he's more of a second round pick, two-way guy, very least Oscar Suibe, type vibe energy that people are going to give him so keep an eye out on him shout out john hollinger for putting me on to him i didn't know when i until i saw those stats i didn't know too much about him i'm kind of a fan of reed shepherd i thought he's kind of reminded me of kirk heinrich as a ku alumni and when the tournament happened dang that was bad if you saw you know shepherd against a and m he was 14 on eight shots, four assists, two steals, and had some deflections. But when they lost to Oakland, that was bad. He had two points. Like he could not stay with Jack, that Jack guy from Oakland. I just think we saw the problem right here in the defensive approach of Reed Shepard that he, for being a smaller dude, he gets his hands on a tons of balls, but his ability to stay solid on non-turnover plays like in front of Mance keeping his hips open and moving I don't think that's something he struggles with and that's going to be something athletically he's going to be limited at again this is one really bad game we're going to have to see during the combine and the pre-draft process how he'll do against other NBA level prospects in one-on-one -on -one battles how well he'll slide his feet how well he'll move his hips and if the, his ability to stay in front of his man is going to be able to make up for his lack of size and length at the next level and then the other side on the offensive side Hollinger wrote it really well right here is that the Shepherds lack of aggression on offense wasn't completely out of the blue he had remarkably few two-point attempts all season the question on tape is how much wiggle can he show to break defense this down as a full-time point guard at the next level and how much was just the classic problem of John Calipari limiting elite guards and I think that's a great way to phrase that I want to hear your thoughts on Reed Shepard down below because that one is definitely an interesting one so John Hollinger writes about Ryan Dunn, great defender, literally looks like a guy who's a one through five, quite essential defender, his, you know, not in center, 10.4% block rates, absurd, 33.1% steal rate in a conservative steal scheme. He's a guy who's going to be a good defender. The whole problem is he's like so lackadaisical on offense, like very conservative. He wrote it. I wrote this in my scouting report that I was when I do Ryan Dunn, you're going to hear me write about it, but it's funny that John Hollinger says this. I said, I can't buy that he is a Herb Jones level defender. 
Uh, I mean, offensive player that he can develop an offensive game, at least to a Herb Jones level. It's just not there. And he's not athletic enough to be a Derrick Jones Jr. type to, the offensive player. So nor is he going to be a guy that's going to surprise you and have a bit more offensive charisma similar to how Herb Jones was, they put the ball on the deck a little bit, shoot some threes and do a little bit of everything, be kind of like a fourth or fifth low option on a starting unit. While Derek Jones has that slashing and cutting ability and athleticism to make up for it in transition and not in the half court, Ryan Dunn doesn't have that. So you think about him and he's getting close to that Jared Vanderbilt territory of inept ability on offense so and that's that's where it gets scary so i want to hear your thoughts right there on ryan dunn i've called dj wagner the cole anthony of this draft again there's the cal perry tax right here and i believe what if i'm recall, recalling right different yeah different schools one's unc one's kentucky and he ended the season shooting 47 percent from the field 29 from three 76 percent from the free throw I think the whole thing is with him is he's going to get drafted in the late mid to late first round. He's kind of one of those guys who's NBA son. So people are going to like that NBA pedigree. He isn't the biggest guy, but he's kind of, he's got the, the most it's, it's a weird fit and he kind of looks like a shot checker, but you, you believe the potential is there. And this guy was one of the top recruits in his class. So he's worth the flyer, but he, right now they just, he doesn't bring you defense. He doesn't bring you elite passing. He's kind of an undersized combo guard, a little bit of shot chucker. You you hope that you can figure something out there, but it's just again he reinforced that there's nothing inherently special about him. Trey Alexander is who we thought he was. You know he's a six foot guard who loves pull up jumpers. He loves the uh, snake pick and rolls and jail the defender before size stepping into jumpers. But that secondary goal. He does not generate free throw, you know, attempts or get to the rim much for a guy who likes to do that. He's a guy that at this point, people thought he was going to be coming back, was going to, you know, grow as an offensive player, but he didn't. He's not. He's an undersized combo guard who can shoot threes, but he wants to be a point guard, but he doesn't really have the point guard traits. He's closer to Nikhil Alexander Walker, but he wants to be more like Andrew Nemhard. And I think that's the whole problem right there is he just doesn't accept who he is. And I think if he just became better off the ball and just showed that he can shoot, catch and shoot threes more and play better as a guy who doesn't need to dribble or have the ball in his hands better, he would be way higher ranked. But he continues to want to be this guy who wants to be a driving kick guy and a a pick and roll facilitator and a guy who collapses and makes the defense collapses but he doesn't do a efficient job of it and i think it's hurting him inherently i all right rob dillian i don't know what to make up i know some people are like oh he's the next coming of ai first off he's not six two this guy's six foot flat he's got like a trey young body He's got elite quickness. He's got some juke. I really see him as a Lou Williams type guy in the NBA. I don't see anything more. And his tentative size and his and everything about that, I think, are, are being shown as things that teams are worried about. So I think the more and more we see him, I think people are just the size, the size, the size. And what is his? I think his floor is higher than his ceiling which is a good thing but at the same time it's lou williams at best if not he's just another undersized combo guard i really don't think he's a facilitator like that i think he's like a facilitator like colin saxon is one of the most overhyped prospects of this past season justin edwards is showing that he could be a six foot eight shooter i honestly think people thought he obviously at the beginning of the year that he was gonna be the number one pick that you know, it was great. I could see him being kind of like a Trevor Ariza type guy in the NBA, sharpshooter at six foot eight who plays defense, or maybe like a Cam Reddish. But the three point shots there, 36 and a half percent. I like that. It's, you know, I just don't think he's that athletic. I don't know what Isaiah Collier is. He's a six five point guard, but like, what is he really? Like, I just don't get really that hype with him. I feel like people want him to, us to look at him like Jaden Ivey, but he's not. 
and I think he's closer to reminding me. I I don't even know. I'm just not excited, and I think he's just such a mixed back, and everybody is just like, who, what are you, and what are you trying to be? And if he just was a better facilitator, or better getting, you know, as a driving kicker, or had a three-point shot, I think it'd be easier to, to dissect him. Cameron Matthews is a guy who, yeah, you know, he stuffed the stat sheet and he's got the size that everybody wants at 6'7", and he could play both the small forward and the power forwards, and he's going to be 23, so he's somebody that people are going to want to bring in on two ways, and second, you know, our second round contract, so I definitely think it's going to be a worthy person to look at. He also could just transfer, and then finding Hunter Salas has decent size. He's a guy that I just recently wrote on, but is three-point percentage going from 25% to 40% is the reason why people are looking at him as a, you know, probably a guy kind of like Gary Trent Jr. So let me hear your thoughts down below. A little longer video than I thought I was going to do, but yeah, that's generally my thoughts on this article that John Hollinger written. If you want to read all his thoughts, they're going to be linked in the description. I, I took a little pieces out there. You'll see if you read the article, what it took rest. I try to keep it to what I thought. Again, go check this out. It's called the NBA Draft Stock. Uh, it should be in the description, but cheers.